Hey there, Facebook Live. Vanessa here on a mission to help those who want more out of life to step up to uncover who they really are, uncover what they really want, and build that courage and that confidence to go on after it. And today's message is I'm wanting to bring to you guys uh, because somebody asked me a question yesterday and they wanted me to talk into relationships. So this is a huge area that I absolutely love to talk into. So I'm going to do it today and it's all going to talk into uh, conditional love and and how that affects so many of us and where it sort of comes from and I'm inspired again by the book that I've been reading which is this one this is Lovability by Robert Holden and definitely if you haven't read this book you've got to get your hands on it it's just it's just for for life and to get the best out of yourself understand yourself it is just phenomenal and particularly if you really want to experience love and so many of us are in these we think we're in love we think we have love but actually it's very very conditional and that's what I wanted to talk into so conditional love is all about being loved for how we behave for whether we meet the rules or the criteria or we we're pleasing enough to others it's got nothing to do with who we really are but the fact of the matter is most of us don't even know who we are so how is anybody else going to really get to know who we are and therefore really giving them that opportunity to love ourselves so to love us and so what I wanted to bring to you guys today was this awesome bit in the book that I'm up to and it's all about childhood mes messages and when I was at a Tony Robbins event about four years ago um, I was introduced to the concept that we develop who we are based on who we we think we need to be in order to gain love from the significant um, people in our lives and it tends to be our mother and our father and so between those years of zero to seven we're developing we're picking up on some mixed messages whatever's going on and we develop you know oh I need to be this certain person in order to have love from my family and if you think about it you know zero to seven you're not really very emotionally intelligent at that stage but the, the thing is is that we we hold on to that idea and that concept around who we need to be that we developed at such a young young age and we never address it unless we get into an event or get questioned or get introduced to the idea that we can question those beliefs we carry on those ideas and those beliefs about who we need to be in order to gain love through all throughout our adulthood and it dictates so much it's why we get so triggered it's why in our relationships we can seem to go round and round in circles and never really truly get to experience real love you know minus those conditions and really ultimately love ourselves so the way Robert Holden talks into it is that you know because we are shown these sort of conditions you know like when we're little babies you know and we're you know zero to between zero and two we're really just you know just little things that need to be loved and nurtured but around the ages of like the terrible twos as they're called that's when we sort of start to step into our own and start to realize that we have some choices here and that's when we start to experience the idea of conditions around our love and it's so fascinating because that's when we sort of take on these childhood roles as Robert Holden calls them and I read through them last night and I was like whoa am I that one that one that one and you know it's so interesting to see these patterns of you know why we do what we do and this is really fascinating so I wanted to share them with you guys today and see if you can pick yourself in one of these childhood roles that if ultimately you build some consciousness around which one you are you can start to see the patterns as to how you show up in your relationships and once we build that consciousness and that awareness around why we get triggered and why we do what we do we can start to have some control around how we're going to show up and when we gain that understanding of ourselves, we can control the way that we love and we can minus those conditions we can see how conditional our love has been 
towards ourselves and towards others and we can start to create the kind of relationships that ultimately you know we all are here to do i really do believe that we're all here at the end of the day to just love and be loved and we do all these crazy things and and get you know try and achieve and do all of these things in order to gain that love but ultimately you're never ever ever going to experience real love without the conditions until you can build some self-awareness around what your patterns are and you can break through and you can start to love and accept yourself so let me introduce you to these childhood roles I just wanted to say hello to everybody who's jumped on here Frank Maritesh Sachin, thank you. Thank you for joining me. And let's um, jump into these roles. So the first childhood role is called the good child. So this one is about, you know, when you take on this, this good child role, it's about when I am good, I am lovable. And I'm going to flick through these and I'm, I'm not going to go too much in depth because I want to get into the gym. So, <laughs> and I don't want to take up too much of your time here. So, the good child believing when I'm good, I'm lovable. It means I've got to behave well. I've got to be a good kid in order to gain love. The next one is the helping child. And that's the, the child who believes if I help you, I will be loved. The next one is the star child, and that's about when I am outstanding, I am loved, I am lovable. And the next one, the fourth one is the happy child. That's all about when I'm happy, I'm lovable. And you know, when you when you think about that one, you're just like, wow, like you've just got to really deny all of your emotions, all of your feelings, because at the end of the day, it's it's like death if you're not if you're not uh, loved at a really deep subconscious level. If we don't feel loved, we feel like we're going to die. Because think about being a little baby. You know, as a little baby, you're so you know you ha you can't look after yourself. You have to rely on somebody to love you so much that they will look after every single one of your needs, or else you will die. So we, we keep, we have this fear going on in, internally that if we're not loved, then we're going to die. And you know, that, that one, the happy child, unless I'm, I, if I'm always happy, then I'm lovable. If I have any other emotion, I'm not lovable. Right. So keep thinking about which one of these you are. The fifth childhood role is the melancholy child. So this one, this child believes that when I'm unhappy, I get more love. This is the kind of person who brings this through into their adulthood, like all of these different roles can come into those adulthood relationships. And this is the one who's always sad, always got problems. And if they don't have problems, then they don't have any way of feeling loved. So... Um, you know, I love what Tony Robbins says. He says that the number one addiction in the world is problems. And this is where this comes from. It makes us feel significant. It, it, may, it puts us in a position where people need to love and support us. And this is just a childhood role, seeking that love, seeking that validation and not feeling like you're lovable without, um, you know, without having a problem. Okay. The next one is the independent child who believes that when I'm independent, I can't be hurt. And from my experience, I've seen so many men in this one where they they want to withdraw, they want to just be their own person, and they they don't want to let anybody in. And I'm not saying women don't have this one as, as well, definitely. But my experience is it's leaned towards more of the man. Like they, they feel that sense that they need to be so independent and they can't let anybody in. They can't express any of those emotions. And they, they take on this role and they need to know that they're independent. Otherwise, you know, they're going to get hurt. They're going to open themselves up and be vulnerable. And that's going to be painful. The next one is the rebel child. I like this one. So, <laughs> but they they really do believe, you know, that I'm unlovable anyway. It doesn't matter what I do, I'm unlovable, so I'm just going to rebel. I'm just going to, you know, be that naughty kid and 
you know, this again, like all of these childhood roles that I'm talking about, they're not just as kids. We bring these into our adulthood if we don't build some conscious awareness around what our patterns are and what those roles are. So yeah, that's the next one. The next one is the genius child who believes if I know how I can be loved. You know, this is where probably, you know, that part of us that's like the know-it-all that doesn't really know but says that they know and wants to be right, you know, that's that's the genius child role and that's all about, you know, it's it's constant throughout, throughout the, the adulthood, like I said, if you don't address it and they always need to know how, they're not willing to allow people to help them or have that input. So that's the next one. And the final childhood role that I want to introduce you to is what's called the peaceful child who believes that when you feel when you feel loved I feel lovable and you know as I was reading through this last night I was like which one am I and I was going through them I was going through the good child yeah maybe the helping child yeah the star child the happy child the melancholy child definitely not me that one the independent child, nah, the rebel child at times, the genius child. But when I got to this peaceful child, <laughs> that's when I realized, whoa, that, that was my role. And that's the one that I need to be conscious of. When you feel loved, I feel lovable. And that's what I did all of my life. I was just such the chameleon, you know. Whoever I was with, you know, it was probably both my greatest gift and my greatest challenge to be able to make whoever I was with feel so significant, feel so loved. And what I wasn't getting was that I was, I, I thought I was being so, so great, such a great human being, you know, to, to make somebody feel so loved. But what I didn't realize and what I can realize now upon reflection was that it was coming from this childhood role, the peaceful child. And it, it ultimately, if you really think about it, that's not real love. It's conditional again. And it's really giving to get. And, you know, that was just like a big wake up call for me to realize that I was creating very conditional relationships in my life and it was blocking me from experiencing real love in my relationships. And, um, and that's what I've had to break through. And I have, and it's a, it's a constant thing that I need to remind myself of because, you know, we're all human and we're not, we're always constantly evolving and growing and you know we've we're gonna replay some of these patterns and that's okay that's definitely okay but it's not okay if you're consistently running into running these patterns and they're creating real problems in your life and you're not willing to look at yourself Instead, you're looking at those other people and you're saying, well, if they would just be like this or if they would just show up like this, then maybe I could be happy. Or you're so unconscious of your patterns that you feel so unloved by yourself that nobody even stands a chance to really love you because you'll never actually trust it. You'll never actually accept it. And that is a painful experience and a painful life to never really truthfully Sorry, I just got a call. I hope that didn't cut out then. I think we're okay. And so, yeah, I hope that this has been um, a, a valuable message for you. I know I shot through all of those childhood roles really, really quickly, um, but I just think that to understand and really getting to just get our minds around and identify ourselves and build a bit more self-awareness and consciousness and um yeah if you guys have any questions whatsoever if you um have any topics that you'd like me to discuss oh my gosh this person just keeps calling me <laughs> need to like get get that out but yeah let me know if there's any questions whatsoever and um yeah i just want to support you so much wherever i can and um yeah it's absolutely my pleasure to jump on these live streams and um i appreciate you guys so much 
And um, yeah, reach out and let me know any questions, any comments, any feedback. Tell me, you know, what are you grateful for at the moment? And um, what are you working on in, at the moment? How are you building that conscious awareness around who you really are, what you really want? And how are you building that confidence and that courage to step up and go after it? So that's it for me from me today. I'm gonna about to jump in the gym and bust out an awesome workout, getting back into the swing of things and really loving that. So sending you all so much love, so much light, so much gratitude, and I can't wait to speak to you guys again tomorrow. All right, bye for now.